Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the latest stock market news updates that you need to know as an investor. So for more videos just like this one, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment your thoughts down below about any or all of these stories, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Stocks tumbled recently as the Federal Reserve hinted that they might relax their monetary policy by cutting interest rates more slowly than investors originally anticipated, and this caused the stock market to fall. However, no stock had a worse day than Spirit Airlines, as their share price dove by 50% after a federal judge blocked their merger with JetBlue. So let's get further into that story. Both of these companies are pretty successful airlines, and like we said, a federal judge recently blocked their merger. The main reason why the federal judge blocked this merger is because the federal judge said that it would harm customers by eliminating a low-cost travel option. Essentially, it's going to make it harder for broke college students to get from one end of the country to the other, and this means that this $3.8 billion deal needed to be blocked. Now, if JetBlue and Spirit Airlines were to actually merge together, they would become the fifth largest airline in the country, right behind other companies like Delta Airlines, American Airlines, United Airlines, and Southwest. However, on the flip side, JetBlue and Spirit Airlines argued that they need this merger because it would be the only way for them to compete with these other major airlines, particularly the big four that we just mentioned. Now, what's also interesting about this development is that because this merger between JetBlue and Spirit Airlines was blocked, that means potentially another merger between Hawaiian Airlines and Alaska Airlines could also be blocked by the DOJ. So we're just going to have to wait and see how that develops. In the meantime, JetBlue and Spirit issued a statement saying that they both disagreed with the federal judge ruling and they are trying to evaluate the next steps to actually get this merger done. So if you are an investor in any airlines, you need to know about this news. And honestly, right now could actually be a good time to buy Spirit Airlines considering how cheap it has gotten in their overall share price. But I'm going to leave that decision up to you. Next up, we have Apple, which for the first time since 2010 recently recently beat Samsung. And here's what I mean by that. Samsung is normally the number one in regards to global smartphone shipments. However, Apple recently topped them by shipping 234.6 million mobile devices, according to IDC's Worldwide Quarterly Mobile Phone Tracker. So although this is great news for Apple and Apple investors, both Apple and Samsung need to pay attention because they are facing increased competition from the Chinese smartphone maker named Huawei. However, in the meantime, I think this is great news for Apple, despite despite them actually cutting their prices over in China for their iPhone 15. But in the meantime, I love Apple and I think they are a fantastic investment. In other news, we have Uber. Uber recently revealed that they plan to shut down their alcoholic delivery platform named Drizzly by March. And if you didn't know, this is going to be an interesting development for this company. What's interesting about this is that Drizzly has been nothing but a pain for Uber. Because in 2020, there was actually a data breach which affected 2.5 million Drizzly users, which was caused by a security vulnerability that the company and its former CEO were aware of, but they failed to fix it. Clearly, this was bad publicity for both Drizzly as well as Uber. But there's more to this story than meets the eye. For instance, Drizzly is actually one of the largest online alcoholic delivery marketplaces with over 100 million customers in North America. But unlike Uber, Drizzly does not have their own delivery drivers. It simply provides the technology to connect consumers to nearby liquor stores, which use their own drivers to deliver alcohol. But since Uber is anticipating to offload Drizzly, we could see volatility in Uber's share price. To offset this, Uber has introduced multiple new services including package drop-offs and flower deliveries as they try to segment their revenue segments and try to become an everything transportation app because if you didn't know, Uber is a ride-hailing services app. Another interesting development about this is that their rival DoorDash said order values at U.S. convenience stores were 50% higher on average when alcohol was included. So on paper, Uber taking over at Drizzly was a good idea, but now it seemed that that strategy has backfired. We even saw Instacart, which has also said that orders with alcohol are usually 25% larger than booze-free carts. 
So it seems that customers who order alcohol tend to spend more money on these various services, which is good for business. So I would like to see how DoorDash and Instacart are going to capitalize on this weakness over in Uber. Speaking about Instacart, their share price recently rallied. They currently trade for around $25 per share, and the news just gets better and better for them. Instacart, ticker symbol C-A-R-T, ticker name Cart, recently increased in their share price as Wolf Research upgraded the online grocery delivery stock to an outperform rating, and this is great news. They actually assigned a price target for Instacart of $35, which is a pretty large increase from their current share price of $25. But that's not all. This also lifted their share price around 3.85% in the pre-market, and all of this good news should lift their share price even higher. Wolf Research also sees potential in Uber Technologies, which we just talked about, and they are actually trying to explore a merger with Instacart. So Uber, even though they are letting Drizzly go, they are going to actually try to merge with Instacart, and this would be amazing because these companies' synergies work very well together. If this merger goes through, you could see the share price of Instacart and Uber absolutely skyrocket, so I'm on the edge of my seat and I will keep you updated if this story continues. You should also be aware that Google recently slashed and laid off some of their product team over at Fitbit. And if you didn't know, Fitbit is a wearable technology brand that Google acquired for $2.1 billion back in 2021. However, now Google is trying to focus on developing their own Pixel Watch. So we are seeing a multitude of companies make very interesting moves lately, including Tesla. If you didn't know, Tesla is an electric vehicle manufacturer which makes EVs, and they also are known for energy storage and energy generation. But recently, they slashed the price for their Model Y variant of their electric vehicle over in Germany, just a week after they slashed prices over in China. And investors are not happy about this. The reason investors are not happy about these price reductions is because this is going to negatively impact Tesla's margins. But overall, I think this is a wise move on the company because it will increase demand for their products. We even see a stock reporter saying that Tesla is undervalued again and that the bare negative critical case for this company is very flimsy. Right now, Tesla trades for around $213, and I think if you can get this company anywhere around $200 to $220, it's a pretty good buying opportunity. Tesla has been in the news a lot recently because not only have they cut their prices of their vehicles over in China, they just did it in Germany, and we also heard that the CEO Elon Musk wants to separate Tesla into two separate companies, one company to focus on artificial intelligence and the other company to focus on electric vehicles, energy storage, as well as energy generation. A lot of this has been twisted into bad news for Elon Musk and Tesla, but honestly, I just don't buy that. Tesla is still a leader in their respected space, and I'm very excited about the future of this company. If you look on screen here, you can see a chart where Tesla is absolutely dominant in the electric vehicle space, and I don't think they are going to give up this market-leading position anytime soon. So overall, I would still think Tesla is a very solid investment, especially if you can buy up their shares at current prices between $200 and $220, according to my analysis. Speaking about electric vehicles, we also see NIO in the news today, ticker symbol NIO, which is an electric vehicle manufacturer located over in China. NIO is currently trading for $6.38, and some investors believe it could fall down to $4, and others believe it could surge up to around $15. So, who's right here? The bad news for the company is that they are planning a massive layoff, but the good news is that the money that they are going to save, where they don't have to pay employees, could push them towards profitability even sooner than anticipated. NIO has also also entered into partnerships to expand its battery swapping infrastructure and improve profitability, and that's why multiple analysts and investors have a buy rating on NEO stock. However, even with that being said, this company is hyper risky. Not only are they a foreign company, but the company is extremely volatile in their overall share price. We have seen them skyrocket and plummet within just a few years, so please be careful if you want to invest into NEO. Zofi Technologies is also in the news, and they received a sell rate from this financial reporter. So let's talk about it. SoFi Technologies is a fintech company or a financial technology company that essentially operates as a digital bank. Some investors believe they will achieve profitability and that will be able to reflect very positively on their share price, while others believe they will miss and not become profitable, thus sending their share price plummeting downwards. However, what I personally think is that they will achieve profitability, the share price of the company will initially increase in price, and then after the earnings report, it will slowly trend downwards before 
before finding their support level. But let's see what this financial reporter had to say. He said that SoFi's products are maturing and growing modestly. And I just want to stop him right there. No, they are not growing modestly. They are growing rapidly. Have you even seen the percentage growth rates of SoFi technology in regards to their member acquisition and their products? It's absolutely insane. However, he does say that the competition in this space is very strong, and I completely agree with him in that regard. Now, what's interesting is he did comment on their rapid growth plans, and he says that they are risky and likely to be disappointing because in the approaching earnings report, we're anticipated to receive a projection of what they could bring in throughout the year of 2024, and this author thinks that it's going to be disappointing, but I completely disagree. I disagree for two main reasons. First, he just said that they have rapid growth plans, and that's exactly what I just criticized him up there for because he only said modest growth plans or that they've been growing modestly as of right now. And I really don't think they're going to be disappointing because the company has been rapidly growing for quite a while now, and this can be sustained throughout the year of 2024. He also says SoFi's strategy to build trust and a lifetime relationship with members is unlikely to overcome its strong competition. Now, what's interesting about this comment is that they are already overcoming their strong competition. We already see SoFi taking members and customers away from much larger traditional banks. So the fact that he says it's unlikely for them to do that is ridiculous because they already have done it and they will continue to do it, especially throughout the year of 2024. Lastly, he says that the company's valuation is based on hope rather than reality. And I can agree to disagree with him here. Since SoFi Technologies is a growth stock, they should be valued at their future potential and not their current valuation. However, if we were to value this company regarding their current fundamentals, then I would agree with this author. However, because SoFi is a growth stock, I disagree with him. SoFi clearly can grow into their overall valuation, and because they're growing rapidly, this just makes their long-term growth trajectory extremely worth it for risk-tolerant investors. But I would love to hear your thoughts down below about this story, and are you a SoFi bull or are you a SoFi bear? I'd love to hear your thoughts. We also see Microsoft in the news, and as you know, Microsoft is one of my all-time favorite investments. According to Wed Bush, Microsoft sales will jump by nearly 12% in the year of 2025, which is amazing for a company as large as Microsoft. Wed Bush sees more than 60% of Microsoft's base using AI over the next three years, and I completely agree. AI will be integrated in almost everything in the future, and I like to see Microsoft as a market leader in this regard. Daniel Ives and his team even said this recently, and I quote, we believe the stock still has yet to price in what we view as the next wave of cloud and AI growth coming to the Redmond story in a full year 2024 with a strong competitive cloud edge versus Amazon and Google. He goes on to say, Our recent partner checks have been incrementally strong around co-pilot developments with MSFT customers. We estimate this could add another approximately $25 billion to Redmond's top line by full year 2025, end quote. Basically, Daniel Ives is saying that Microsoft is well positioned to compete against their competition such as Amazon and Google. He also says that there is a large market opportunity for Microsoft to continuously increase their revenues. And that's why he identified that approximate $25 billion revenue opportunity in 2025. Investors should also be excited because Microsoft is set to report their fiscal second quarter results on January 30th after the close of the trading day. Currently, analysts have consensus estimates for this company that they will bring in $2.76 per share and $61.05 billion worth of revenue. Some of the best artificial intelligence stocks right now to buy would be Microsoft and NVIDIA, which are both leading the AI revolution, and they are still poised to explode. But there are also other companies, such as Google, Datadog, and Palantir, which are really showing their artificial intelligence prowess, which are some of my favorite companies to buy. So I would highly recommend you look into these companies. Speaking about AI and technology companies, we also see Zscaler in the news, ticker symbol ZS, which currently trades for $223 per share. Z Zscaler's share price recently fell after being initiated at key bank capital markets with a sector weight rating, and investors did not like that, so some of them sold this company. Here's why the analyst initiated coverage and gave them the rating that they did. He said, and I quote, The network security industry is undergoing a fundamental shift from a traditional hub and spoke, firewall-based architecture to a zero-trust distributed local breakout architecture with SASE. Essentially, the analyst says that things are changing, and 
and Zscaler might not be able to keep up with the competition. However, even with that being said, the stock does have a buy rating from Seeking Alpha authors, and Wall Street also rates this company as a buy rating, while Seeking Alpha's quant rating system says to hold this company. But overall, I like Zscaler, and it's in my portfolio because I think the future of this company looks rather bright. Another company that I really like is AMD, which competes directly with Intel as well as Nvidia. AMD competes with Intel by making central processing units known as CPUs for personal computers and servers, but it also rivals Nvidia in the market for graphics processing units or GPUs for PC, gaming consoles, and data centers. So if you like Nvidia, AMD could be an amazing growth opportunity for you, especially if they could even achieve a sliver of the growth that Nvidia has. AMD also uses the chip foundry named Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, ticker symbol TSM. However, this does add a lot of volatility because there is a lot of geopolitical factors happening over in Taiwan, because if China does invade Taiwan, we could see companies that Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing issues out their products to also go down in their share price. Now, what I like about AMD is that they are now focusing on making chips for artificial intelligence applications to compete directly with NVIDIA. And just like NVIDIA's share price surged, we can see AMD's share price soar as well. So if you haven't already looked into AMD, I would highly recommend you do so to make sure it's good for your personal portfolio. To go over some quick news updates, let's talk about the largest stock gainers today. Starting off with Sinclair's shares, which rose by 5% following Diamond Sports Group's settlement of an ongoing legal legal litigation. So it's really good when companies end up settling ongoing litigations because this removes risk from that overall company's back and that's why their share price increased by 5%. Next we have ticker symbol PI. This stock soared by more than 12% after the company projected its quarter four 2023 revenue results would surpass earlier guidance. It's really good news when a company gets to impress investors by delivering or at least projecting and surpassing original expectations. The company was supposed to bring in anywhere between $65.5 million and $68.5 million, but now they expect sales to exceed $70 million, and that's why their share price popped by 12%. On top of the largest gainers, we also see the largest losers, and a lot of them would come from the Chinese market, particularly Chinese EV makers like Li Auto, Xpeng, and Neo. The reason for the decline in their share prices is because recent insurance registration data from China does indicate a sluggish trend for most EV EV startups over in China. We also know that the pricing competition over in China is very rough, which means the margins are very slim. And that's one of the reasons why Tesla had to cut the prices of their electric vehicles so they can remain competitive over there. So I'm interested to see how the EV market will further heat up over in China. We also see Solar Edge, ticker symbol SEDG, and their shares fell by 5% after Barclays downgraded the firm from equal weight to underweight, and they lowered their price target from $74 down to just $50. So that's a huge blow to this company. But it's not all bad news because we also see companies such as Meta Materials skyrocketing in their share price by 46%. In a similar vein, we see Risk on International, ticker symbol ROI, which is a great ticker symbol, and their share price rose by 33% recently. But the good news continues because Solid Power, ticker symbol SLDP, has increased their share price by 12% after announcing an expanded partnership. But it's not all good news because Funware crashed in their price by 59% recently after a rally. And we see a plethora of other companies also falling in their share prices. But I would love to hear your thoughts about any or all of these stocks, companies, and stories that we covered today. With that being said, don't forget to go and annihilate that like button right now. Subscribe if you are new. Go ahead and become a member of this channel for as little as 99 cents per month because that's what keeps me here on YouTube. And with that being said, I wish you the best of luck, happy investing, and I will see you in the next YT video.